to hang out with Madeline. Madeline, it's so good to have you on. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. <laughs> I'm so excited. So I, I'm really excited for this one because I often bring on people that I, you know, go to hang out with often and grab tea with often. And you and I wanted to do that when you're living in New York and our yeah. schedules were just like, burp, right. Mm -hmm. Colliding. Um, cause we're also pretty incredible in what we do. And so there's a, there's a boundary, a time boundary that comes in. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and, but I've been watching you, like we both kind of, I think I've been watching you from the side being mm -hmm. like, I really enjoy the space that you're creating and, and mm -hmm. what you're doing. And so the Sisu society that you created mm -hmm. is such a beautiful, just womanhood, sister, sisterhood. And I'm, I loved, I got to hang out in there and I loved that so much. The energy was delicious. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious, like, I don't really know where this all started for you. I know that you've been doing this for a while and I know that your podcast has been up for a while, but oh, when did it all start? When were you like, this is what I'm supposed to teach intimacy. This is what mm. I'm supposed to do. Mm. Thank you. I love this question. And yeah. I'm so glad that we're doing this like three years later. <laughs> three years later after, after that one time you were going to come to my apartment and we were record everything when I was living in Brooklyn. We and were now here we are. And that was, it was such a like beautiful experience having you in CSU society. They adored you. Yeah. They are such loves. Wow. They were like, oh, I'm blown open by Genevieve. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to give you the, um, I would say quick and dirty, but it's like, it's like long and dirty. It's, it's not like quick. It's, it's a long story, but I'll try to make it quick and dirty. I have to. I, let's, <laughs> let's make it less. You, can, you have all the time <laughs> in the world, right? <laughs> yes. It's this expansion. Mm -hmm. um, so I, you know, I was, I was raised in a very patriarchal purity culture, Christian, narcissistic, emotionally abusive, psychologically abusive home. And a lot of that, the latter stuff that I just said has been unpacked over the past five years, mm. really deep looking at, oh, wait, that's not, that is psychological abuse. And that's actually incredibly harming to a child learning to trust their intuition, you know, mm. being told that I don't feel what I feel. I don't think what I think. I don't see what I see. Yeah. What happened didn't happen. So you combine that with religion. And things get really messy really fast where mm -hmm. you're, I'll say my, my parent, one of my parents, particularly my mother, um, my mother would do things and then say she never did them and then blame me for seeing things that weren't there and then tie in God that God also doesn't honor me anymore for my, my choices of doing what I did mm -hmm. or spending time with the friends that I spent time with or just like weird things. Like I couldn't have friends who didn't look like me, white parents oh. still married. Like there were all these really, really, um, terrible rules that I was raised with as a kid that couldn't, I couldn't understand and very hypocritical of my, my mother. And, um, I started having some major OCD type behaviors growing up where I would, I would freak out. We had a housekeeper that would come and clean things. And if she moved my picture frame, I would have these massive panic attacks. And if she moved the bed over to, you know, vacuum or whatever, I would have panic attacks because everything that was in order, that was the only thing I could control. Right. <laughs> and, and, and I freaked out and I had all of these interesting little things that would come up that my parents would basically punish me for. I would get grounded for misbehaving when things were out of order. And I, it was just, it was chaotic and I was trapped and it was painful and I couldn't understand anything behind the why. Like mm -hmm. I will always think that childhood was the hardest, is the hardest and will always be the hardest time of my life because nothing made sense. And, it's and as time... a teenager, was it just as intense? The teenage adolescent? Oh, teenage part? was worse. Teenage really? was so much worse because that's when the purity culture stuff started. Really? It, was, it wasn't around a big sex deal and, okay. around sex around, um, you know, my, my first kiss when I was 13 was incredibly traumatic. It ended up with my mom screaming at me, giving me like six mm -hmm. books I had to read before I ever talked to another boy. And they were all Christian books about dating Holy cow. Telling me God no longer appreciated me. This is what happens when the devil is in your mind. The devil mm -hmm. gets in the way. And this was from a, a first kiss. So like a peck after the wow. movies when I'm like happy. 
I got the attention of this cute redhead. I love redheads. I was like, oh my God, he, he, he like kissed me. And then I get immediately punished and grounded and slut shamed from my family and from God, um, you know, through my mom. And so that continues to get much worse as I get older and these rules start popping up and I start having to sign contracts with my, my parents of like, uh, mm -hmm. I promise that I, Madeline Moon, will be modest and will not ride in the car with more than one boy as long as a, as a girl's not there and I, Madeline Moon, promise and wore the uh, true love of what I know, just is a heavy story. My mind is like, what? Holy yes. cow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, have you heard of True Love Waits? No. Okay. So it's a, it's an abstinence program okay. where you are 16 years old and girls are taken through basically a course where they commit their body and their lives to God until they're married. Okay. So they wear a ring on the ring finger that promises they are to God and they commit to abstinence until they're married. Because my mother told me that when I'm married, I will have to confess to my partner, how many men I was intimate with. And from there he would decide if he wanted me still or not. Wow. Wow. I can't even begin to imagine like the beliefs that must have started to, I mean, I'm my, my whole body is tensing up just hearing you. So mm -hmm. I, I can't even imagine how constrict it feels like you were like, there was a caging of your full self oh, yeah. during oh. that time. So deeply. And like, what does sex mean? Sex is dirty and wrong. And Mm -hmm. and like punishable like it's punishable. like a sin right it's oh I just got goosebumps because that oh uh, yeah I feel it all on my spine that's so true it was it was the punishment of like you have a desire you have a yearning you have an interest even your eyes are darting your eyes are darting and it is punishable by by God who my mother apparently had the voice of and she got to she was kind of the gatekeeper like in Catholicism going to confession it was kind of like my mom was the gatekeeper between me and God, which is wow. what a lot of the Bible is now, you know, since so many books were taken out of it, the Bible now is more, is affirming that belief that authority can tell you whether or not you get to go to heaven or hell. Mm -hmm. You know, that whole concept I believe was created so that there was power with the state mm -hmm. so that they could decide. And, 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 and my mother would always use that, obey your father and mother. And it always left me so confused of if I want God to love me, I have to obey my mother and father, father and mother. But what if my father and mother tell me that I'm terrible or they, they tell me to do things that are bad or they hurt me and they harm me? Do I have to obey them so that God loves me? And that, the answer to that as my, in my childhood and, and teen and well into adulthood was yes. Wow. So where's your personal power and your personal choice? It sounds like there was no ability to kind of decide on your own. Oh yeah, none, none, none. No decision. privacy, no, wow. no privacy, no, no privacy in the journal, no privacy in the phone, no privacy in what I'm feeling. If I smiled too much, she would, she would demand that I tell her why she had harassed me. I was harassed until I was about 26 years old from oh my, my mother, but she's mother. So there's this idea in Western society and, and actually probably throughout a lot of the world that if you are family, you're, you're family through thick and thin and you do what you have to do for each other. And that meant to me not having personal power. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I had to do in order to live that perspective of the Western mentality of be there for your, it's your family. Mm -hmm. You know, you do everything for them or you are selfish or you're bad or you're not going to to heaven which is what was super active to me in my mind when I was young is that fear of I'm gonna like I, I'm a terrible person I'm just a terrible person is what I thought wow wow and so yeah. there must have been a point because you're totally to me you're like yeah. the opposite of that childhood yeah. so there must have been a point where you were like fuck this shit or maybe it was less drastic but I'm imagining that you had a moment where you realized how how disempowered you felt and like how caged you felt to then become yeah. you like what happened to get you to here because it's I mean it's a huge transformation well, it was a it was a long slow drip okay there were moments where I was going wait a minute but <laughs> then that that thought needed to percolate for a, a couple of years so mm -hmm. after college or even during college I needed a to expel my anxiety and my panic in some way so I found bodybuilding 
Okay. And I became a bodybuilder. And like, as long as I was lifting weights and counting my calories and weighing myself every morning and doing the ab checks, then I felt safe. And, and there's a sense well. of control in that too, sense right? Like control. To, right. Totally. And I had a big moment a few years. I probably had seven years of eating disorder. Mm-hmm. And after the second bodybuilding show, I went, okay, wait a minute something's up. Like, I was like, this is not right. Mm. It was more like a full on collapse. And I, I left my, my, I I got in my car. I drove in the middle of the night into the mountains. I found an apartment to stay in. I was 22 and I moved to a place where I didn't know a single person. And I literally was like becoming an old crone. I was like, I need to go find myself. (laughs) So I went into the mountains. I, I did some deep, like soul searching around the food arena which Mm -hmm. led to me starting my podcast, starting a business to help women. And, and then I'd say it's, you know, I'm 29 and that was 22. So over those seven years, this has been a time of me, um, with relationship after relationship, after relationship, continuing to unpack my desire. And, you know, seven years ago, I was really, I was at the stage of like, why am I overthinking everything in sex? Why am I constantly thinking, 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 thinking? So I have a lot of empathy for the woman who's constantly thinking during intimacy because mm-hmm. you're trying to rationalize something that's irrational. It's right. just, you feel good. You just feel good. And there was a lot of performance anxiety. Am I good and bad or good or bad? Am I going to hell? Mm. Does God still love me even if I'm choosing to do a sin? So right. that was a big period of time. And, and that eventually through, I think back then, I don't really think about it. It was, I wasn't into like courses and training and teachers yet around Tantra that and the overthinking stage was more about just breathing. I was like, let's just breathe (laughs) as we receive pleasure. And I wasn't making any sound. I wasn't making any requests. So that didn't start until I discovered feminine and masculine energetics. And then Uh I was like, oh, there's something here. Mm. But the real stuff, the real transformation did not start until I met John Wineland and Kendra Kunoff, who I trained with for a few years. And that's when I was like, oh my God, (laughs) spirituality and sex. And that's when I discovered that essentially my gift here on earth is to be a dakini Uh and to bring my fullest expression to sex. And it's so beautiful how my journey started with so much shame around sex. And now I'm like, oh my God, my (laughs) greatest power is when I am making love. Uh When I, when I combine my spirit and my ultimate love for God and all the, all the, all the gurus and all the deities and, and everything all at once into my fucking yoni and like, just like <laughs> exploding with joy and passion and mm-hmm. alchemizing all that shame and turning it into just pure love. Yeah. Yeah. So like that, I'm sure that that journey, so you studied with John and Kendra. I, lo- I love them. Um, Kendra, especially home girl. Um, I <laughs> love them. Yeah. And, um, And I'm sure though that your own personal relationships at this time, there was like this phase of like, can I be this free? Can I be this open? Can I be this expressive? It's, you know, often I see this with women. They're in like this, is it okay to scream? Can I make that noise? Can I be that loud? Can I be that outrageous? Um, And what was that like for you kind of stepping into that fierce, like I would imagine a space that's uncharted Mm -hmm. in this lifetime. What was that like? Oh my God. So it was very scary. Um, I, it was at first it was my body just wouldn't do it. It just Mm -hmm. would not do it. Making sound was so embarrassing and looking mad was so embarrassing. One of the very first things we did, I know I wasn't allowed to be mad when I was a kid. I didn't know how to be mad ever. It it was, I was, it was punishable by Mm -hmm. God, by law, whatever it was, but it was punishable. So one of the first assignments that John and Kendra had us do in the very first workshop was one by one, we stood up in the front of the class mm-hmm. and the, you know, the class and the, the, the group, the, um, the, the salon would raise their hand and say what I would want to see from you so that I could feel you more is blank. So for some people, it's like, I want to feel the part of you. That's the four-year-old who's sad. Mm-hmm. So the person would soften their eyes and maybe begin to cry. And somebody else might be like, I want to feel the part of you that would kill for me. And then that man might go into warrior or that woman might go into warrior. Mm -hmm. 
And for me, there was a man that said, I want to see your Kali rage. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't know who Kali was. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what rage was. And so then I had to ask, like, what is that? Like, I think I was like, ah. <laughs> even that led me feeling embarrassed. Aww. I was mechanical. I just kind of did a shake. And I remember John just kind of like seeing me at my edge and uh, them kind of saying like more. And so then I thrashed really mechanically, you know, and opened my mouth, made a little bit of sound. And I know my chest went bright red. I was so embarrassed. I was like, they're seeing me this. It looks funny it was like little tiny pinpricks all over my skin yeah. because it was so foreign to my nervous system. Mm. And that was then, you know, I would say even after that first five day workshop, I came, I left completely different because we were forced then that was just the first workshop. But after <laughs> that, we were forced to start making more sound to start being more expressive. And then I was seen in it. And the more I was seen in those states, the more I, my body, not my mind, my body started to go, okay, this is safe. This is safe. And it's just since then been layer after layer of unveiling and revealing. And it's been interesting now, all these years later, I am like in sex, I never would have asked for what I wanted or made adjustments or even something as small as like, I don't like this song that's playing and it really <laughs> was distracting me. I wouldn't lean over and change it. Mm. No, I'm like, fuck the mood. The vibe is the most important thing. <laughs> like, I'm going to get this vibe right. Even if yeah. we're in a moment, I'm going to be like, you go lie on the bed. I'm going to light the candles real quick. Turn on the music, dim the lights. It's going to be great. Like <laughs> I will make sure the vibe is on point because I know and you actually helped me a lot with that, like really anchoring in that I'm essential yeah. and I, essential is everything to me. And you were talking about your partner and how they like the senses is so crucial. Everything is really. Mm -hmm. And that gave me more permission to be like the senses to me are everything, temperature, yeah. light, sound. Yeah. And so that has been interesting lately. The universe has been giving me some some men that are kind of scared by my complete openness to roar in bed <laughs> to ask for what I want to turn the lights red and to pounce <laughs> it's 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 different for them and so I've been rejected a couple times the past year yeah. um of them being like this isn't what I want or or and and it was just kind of like huh it is what I want. Right. <laughs> yeah. This is who I, I am. <laughs> this is who I am. And it's like taking a long time to get here, but it's, it feels like now I'm going through some sort of initiation into my sacred slut them even yeah. more of like, this is initiation part of being rejected or part of initiation is being rejected and to feel that and to be like, oh, well, that actually doesn't mean anything about me. That just shows me where you're at, which is fine. Right. It shows me where I'm at, which is great. Right. <laughs> I, I was getting a massage yesterday and the song, this, my massage therapist. And I know like when I find a good one, I like grab onto them. I'm like, you're coming over every other That's week. Mark. Right. Um, <laughs> he's so good. And I, the song that was playing, I hated it. Like I just couldn't mm -hmm. within the first five seconds, I was like, no. And I just, I'm, I'm like lying down. I'm in total like oneness space. Cause he's tantric. So he knows how to bring me where I need to go. And I just yelled, no, change it. <laughs> just like, <laughs> like, and immediately he's like, okay. <laughs> like, change the button. And I was like, I can't, like, I'm not even going to waste five seconds here in this, not liking this. Like there's no reason. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I love that you brought that up. I, I, I went to this new place to get a massage mm -hmm. and the woman from the minute I walk in, the woman like runs down the hallway. They just opened. I think I was the first one that day. And she's like, Oh, oh are you, are you Madeline? You're, you're in this room. Come this way. And she's wearing her coat and she's wearing her shoes. And she's just like, just got in. And she's like, okay, do you know what to do? Do you need a towel? Do you want an extra blanket? This is where you're going to lie down. Have you done this before? And I was like, that energy is so not sensual. <laughs> it's like, oh, I have, I have done a massage before. Thank you. I don't think I need a blanket. Thank you. I'm just going to lie down. She comes in she like, like opens her bag real quickly to grab, I think a hair tie and is rummaging through her things. And then she places her hands on my back really abruptly and just starts like, no. and I was like, I just raised my head up and I was like, I feel 
that you are a little tense. Are you tense? And she immediately like dropped down to her knees to my level on the, on the table. And she goes, Oh no, honey, I'm sorry. I just, I came back from a sports massage. So let's drop in together. I'm so sorry. Oh, you're so sensitive. Okay. All right. Let's breathe. (laughs) And she just like came down and I was so proud of myself for saying something because sometimes I do get a little hesitant around massages still. And that's mm-hmm. an edge for me. And it was really beautiful the way she met me where I was at. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was trying to make sure my verbiage wasn't like I'm projecting onto her, but I was just like, I do feel, <laughs> I do feel in this moment, you've got some tenseness. And she met that with such compassion. And I was like, oh, this is nice. Oh. So then we got back on track and it was really good. Oh, that's so good. That's so, <laughs> you know, it's, I think there's this, in the journey of reclaiming our sexuality, right? There's this place where we start to recognize that in any given situation, we have the power to shift it, right? Mm -hmm. And we have the power within our bodies, within our being. And so for you to just say, I think you're a bit tense, right? It's a perfect example of like, no matter what is happening, you actually get to direct the scene. You get Mm -hmm. to, for your nervous system so that you feel freaking good Mm -hmm. and yummy. (laughs) exactly like exactly take up space I love that you said you're not even going to spend one second listening to the song it's like yeah this is your massage and 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 they can't do better and when I say they I mean anybody anybody in our life this person in our life cannot do better if they don't know better and our bodies are telling us every second every minute what's yes and what's no Mm -hmm. or what's a maybe or what what like what's just one, one centimeter away from being spot on, you know, yeah. and, and the people in our life want to know how to meet us where we're at or serve us better or love us better. And we are the best people to teach them how to do that. If we just open our mouths and say it or reveal it. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Totally. I love that so much. So, um, <laughs> thank you so much. This was yummy. I I'm, I'm really, blown away by how much of a transformation mm. you went through like I can't even imagine the the polarity like the shift of like childhood to now that's crazy for me like I'm that's such a big that's some deep courage to mm. be like I'm gonna show up especially when you were talking about your moments with John and Kendra like like okay I don't know what rage is but I'm gonna fucking try mm-hmm. Like those moments, instead of, I don't know it, it's uncomfortable. I'm going to close back off and, and go hide, you know, yeah. um, how you just were like, I'm going to be seen in this shit and my imperfection of it. There's mm-hmm. so much courage in your story to just claim you fully. And mm-hmm. it's really inspiring to hear. It's really thank beautiful. You. Yeah. So thank you so much. 